Embassies in several countries came under attack Friday as protests continued across the Muslim world. CNN has footage from the Sudanese capital of Khartoum. Protesters started at the British and German embassies and then moved on to the United States embassy. We understand at one point there were as many as 10,000 people protesting outside of those embassies. The protesters also broke windows at the U.S. Embassy in India and Tunisia. Fox News has disturbing footage from Tunisia. And there were reports of them setting trees on fire and breaking windows at the U.S. Embassy in Tunis. Uh, you know, it makes, are there any safe embassies right now? At the heart of the protest is an American-made film mocking Islam's prophet. The film Innocence of Muslims portrayed Muhammad as a homosexual and pedophile. A writer for the National, based in the United Arab Emirates, says the film is just right for setting off the cycle of offense and violence. Islamophobes in the West will say, we told you they're fanatics, and the crowd riling demagogues here will say, we told you they disrespect us. That's probably the point, according to the editor of Egypt's Ahram Online. He says the film is meant to counter the revolutionary image Muslims gained during the Arab Spring by provoking them to violence. And he adds, Egyptians took the bait, prodded on by extremists. Not only did it provide a golden opportunity need to strike against the revolutionary values they abhor as aesthetic Western imports. It also gave them renewed access to the nation's political stage. Protests in Cairo continued Friday with crowns throwing rocks at the embassy. The Muslim Brotherhood had initially called for a million man march at Tahrir Square. Later, the call changed for smaller protests at individual mosques, possibly to diffuse anger across the city. The change of tone goes along with a letter from a Muslim Brotherhood member in the New York Times condemning the embassy attacks. Several analysts speculated the Brotherhood is trying to undo the political damage of being associated with violence. A correspondent at HLN says it seems to be working. Though a few thousand protesters did surround the U.S. Embassy, it was nothing compared to the tens of thousands seen in protests against the government. These are the hardcore protesters that you see. It looks like they enjoy the fight with the police. You see them all the time. You don't see the large demographics, which you see at other popular protests. So is there more behind the protests than an offensive film? A Sky News analyst says buses in Sudan's capital were waiting to take protesters from embassy to embassy, showing someone is literally steering the public outrage. This is not a spontaneous outpouring of anger as you come out of the mosque and think, you know, I feel so worked up about this. And there is a level of organization to all of these protests, and it's not just about the film. But the protests may also stem from a misunderstanding. A Syrian analyst tells RT many citizens in Arab states are used to systems where all media is state controlled. They don't understand how the system here, for example, in the United States of America works. They, they thought that this is something that the U.S. sanctioned, the U.S. is happy with, maybe the U.S. is sponsoring. If true, it would explain why protesters in Cairo are demanding an apology from the U.S. government over the film. But an MSNBC analyst says it still doesn't justify the violent reaction. This is a film that obviously has offensive content uh, for many for many Muslims. And the answer to it is to protest peacefully. It is not to answer with violence. U.S. officials, including Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, have spoken out against the film but have not apologized. They have condemned the attacks and stepped up security at embassies across the Middle East. For Newsy, I'm Lauren Gorris. Multiple sources, the real story.